racially charged. Quiet. Thinking your tweets are racist, sir. Quiet. Racially tinged. Our opposition to our socialist colleagues has absolutely nothing to do with their gender, with their religion, or with their race. Racially infused with a racial velute. It, it definitely is worse if you're a woman, and it's worst of all if you're a coloured woman. Why can't the media ever just use the word racist? This week, 72 female MPs from across the Commons wrote a letter to Meghan Windsor, nay Markle, condemning the way she's been treated by the British tabloid press, as well as criticising the Red Tops for printing stories which, on further examination, turn out to be nothing more than malicious fraff. The letter also called out what can only be described as outdated colonial undertones to some of these stories. You what, mate? Look, if the main problem here was colonial undertones, then Meghan would never have married into the British royal family in the first place. This is a colonial undertone. This is a colonial undertone. And this is just straight up racism. But the reason why people are so squeamish about calling it out for what it is, is because of a fundamental mistake when it comes to thinking about race. Liberal ideology would have you think that racism is a form of extreme impoliteness. Acknowledging the existence of difference is in itself an act of hostility. Racism exists on a spectrum of social snafus ranging between there's a large hairy mole on your face to get the fuck out of my eye line, you moly faced fuck. So sometimes you end up in a situation where in order to avoid saying words like black or Asian, someone finds themselves saying something which is way more racist than the thing that they were gonna say in the first place. It's not just about being black or a funny, to, you know, different beer from the. Here we see the ultimate incarnation of colorblind ideology. I can't actually detect the presence of melanin, only the relative hilarity of the tinge in front of me. The reason why people pretend that race is nowhere is because, in fact, racism is everywhere. Racism affects how much you earn, how the police treat you, the quality of the air you breathe, and whether you can reliably make it through an airport without the ominous sound of rubber gloves snapping. Race isn't a biological reality, but it is a social one. It's not an outdated colonial undertone, it's the stuff of our everyday lives. The fact is, you can't get away from the social injustice of racism the minute you open up a conversation about race. Social hierarchy isn't an accidental byproduct of race, it's the reason why race exists as a technology of governance at all. So enough with the euphemisms already! Name the damn problem so we can set about abolishing it. If you liked this video, you know what to do. Share it, hit like, subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you really like this video, go to support.navaramedia.com. You can give us a one-off donation, which keeps Gary in premium gruel, or you could subscribe for the equivalent of one hour of your wage per month. That way we can keep working round the clock to bring you the stories that do, and sometimes don't, really matter.